Topic 2.2, all cells arise from other cells. Not all cells in multicellular eukaryotic organisms keep their ability to divide. Eukaryotic cells that do retain their ability to divide show a cell cycle. There are three stages in the cell cycle. The first stage is interphase, which is the part that the cell normally spends the most time in. Normal cell activities happen here, but most importantly, in preparation for cell division, the DNA has to replicate semi-conservatively. This leads to our chromosomes appearing as two sister chromatids, which are identical and they're still joined to each other by a centromere. Because we're synthesizing DNA, we call this part of interphase S phase. Before S phase and after S phase, we have growth phases, so these are called G1 and G2. In these stages of interphase, the number of organelles, the volume of the cytoplasm increases, we have normal activities such as protein synthesis, and we increase our content of ATP, which is going to release energy for mitosis. The cell here is just generally growing. Now that we've prepared, we're going to have mitosis, which is a division of the nucleus, where the chromatids, the sister chromatids, separate. This is going to form two nuclei, and they're going to contain identical copies of DNA. Now, this is not necessarily cell division. This is not the division of the cytoplasm. This is the division of the nucleus. So a third stage happens after this, which is called cytokinesis. This is the division of the cytoplasm to form two cells, and it doesn't always happen. So why is this important? Mitosis is important because it enables a parent cell to divide to form two genetically identical daughter cells, which contain exact copies of the DNA of the parent cell. This is important to enable multicellular organisms to grow by increasing their cell number and it's also important to replace cells to repair tissues. Now this is not repairing the cells themselves so be very careful with how you're wording this. It's also part of asexual reproduction because it creates identical cells. Every stage in the cell cycle is very tightly regulated there are a series of checkpoints which need to be met in order to progress between each stage. Sometimes, perhaps due to a mutation, these can become dysregulated and lead to cell division becoming uncontrolled. This means that cells divide rapidly um, and not necessarily when stimulated. This can lead to the formation of cancers and tumours. How we can sometimes treat these is just to control the rate of cell division by disrupting the cell cycle. If we disrupt the cell cycle, then cell division and mitosis is going to slow down and therefore tumour growth is going to slow. We can use our knowledge of the cell cycle and of, of mitosis to work out how we could do this. Firstly, we could prevent DNA replication during interphase which is going to, again, prevent or slow down mitosis because there wouldn't be two copies of every chromosome. There wouldn't be two sister chromatids joined by a centromere, so therefore they wouldn't be able to be pulled apart. Another thing that we can do is to disrupt spindle fibre activity and formation. We'll look at more at how these work in a moment when we look at the details of the stages of mitosis. If these don't form, then chromosomes can't attach to the spindle fibres by their centromeres, and sister chromatids can't be pulled to opposite sides of the cell. This means the nucleus won't divide and we prevent and slow down mitosis. You need to know what's happening in the different stages of mitosis, specifically the behaviour of chromosomes and the role of spindle fibres attached to centromeres in the separation of chromatids. There are four stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase, PMAT. In prophase, we can think of the P standing for prepare, During prophase, the chromosomes are going to condense, becoming shorter and thicker, which means that they appear as two sister chromatids joined by a centromere. The nuclear envelope will also start to break down and the centrioles will move to opposite poles, forming the spindle network. Metaphase, we can think of the M standing for middle here. So during metaphase, the chromosomes align along the equator of the cell, which is just the middle of the cell, and the spindle fibres now attach to the chromosomes by their centromeres. Anaphase, we can think of the A as standing for apart. During anaphase, the spindle fibres contract, pulling sister chromatids to opposite poles of the cell. During this, the centromere is going to divide. Telophase, we can think of the T in telophase as standing for two. 
During telophase, the chromosomes uncoil, becoming longer and thinner so we can no longer see them in detail through the microscope. The nuclear envelope is going to reform and therefore we're going to see two nuclei. The spindle fibres and centrioles will also start to break down. Remember, cytokinesis normally happens next, but it's not part of mitosis itself. Cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm, which produces therefore two whole new cells. There's a required practical to do with mitosis, and during that practical, we have to prepare stained squashes of cells from root tips. We have to set up and use an optical microscope and use this to identify the stages of mitosis, to calculate a mitotic index and to measure the apparent size and calculate the actual size of the cells. There are some really common exam questions to do with each part of this and we're going to take a look at therefore why we do different things. So why we squash the cells, why we press firmly on them to squash them is to create a single layer of cells so that they're thin so that light can pass through them from the microscope which will enable us to see our chromosomes. We stain our cells, which enables us to see chromosomes because these wouldn't be visible under the light microscope if we didn't do this. We use cells from root tips because these are where cells are dividing. Um, obviously, we're investigating the cell cycle, we're investigating mitosis, and we know that not all cells in eukaryotic organisms retain the ability to divide. So it's important that we're looking at ones that do. You also need to know how to set up and use the optical microscope and using your knowledge of what we've just been through in mitosis, you should be able to identify the stages of mitosis, but it might be worth just having a look at some microscope images of them and practicing some to check that you know them. Now we want to calculate the mitotic index. In order to do this, we count the total number of cells and the number of cells in different stages of mitosis. When we're doing this, it's important that we use a large number of fields of view to ensure our sample is representative and to make sure that we're repeating our counts to check that they're correct. We also want to standardise it in some way. So are we counting cells at the edge? That's the sort of thing that we want to consider. So to actually calculate this, then we divide the number of cells undergoing mitosis by the total number of cells. Another thing that you can also be asked to do, which is commonly examined, is to calculate the time spent in each stage of the cell cycle. So for example, you'd be given some information like the fact that one cell cycle takes eight hours. There are 50 cells and four of these cells are in metaphase. How many minutes do they spend in metaphase? So what we would do is we would calculate the proportion of cells in metaphase at any one time. So we divide the number of cells in metaphase, that's 4, by the total number of cells, that's 50. Then we want to multiply it by how long the cell cycle takes. But we're asking, we've are asking, we been asked to find it in minutes, so we convert 8 hours into minutes, which is 480 minutes. And therefore we, div we multiply 4 divided by 50 by 480, and that tells us that the cells on average spend 38.4 minutes in metaphase. Now onto how prokaryotic cells, for example, bacteria, how they replicate. They replicate by a process called binary fission. This is not the same as mitosis. They don't undergo a cell cycle. So remember, prokaryotic cells have circular DNA and might have small accessory DNA parts called plasmids. So it's really simple. All that happens is their circular DNA replicates. Remember, this isn't the chromosome replicating. This is circular DNA. And as well as this, the plasmids will replicate. Then simply the cytoplasm will expand and each DNA molecule is going to move to opposite poles of the cell. The cytoplasm will divide and that will leave us with two daughter cells. They'll have a single copy of DNA and they might have a variable number of plasmids. Viruses, if you remember from the cell structure video, that viruses aren't cells, they're acellular and non-living, so therefore they don't undergo cell division, they don't undergo binary fission, and they don't undergo mitosis or the cell cycle. How they, how they replicate themselves is they have an attachment protein which is going to bind to a complementary receptor protein on the surface of a host cell. They'll have a receptor protein which is complementary to the receptor on probably only one type of cell. So for example, HIV, the protein on there is complementary to the receptor on the surface of T cells. That enables it to enter the cell where it's going to inject its nucleic acid. That might be DNA or it might be RNA, single-stranded or double-stranded. 
Then it will be more complex than this and it will vary between the different viruses, but the infected host cell is going to replicate the virus particles. So it's basically hijacking a host cell and using that to replicate itself.